In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we're going to show you how you can replace the sky in your photographs in order to change the mood, the tone, or just basically improve the picture. To do that, you click on the Guided button at the very top, and then you move to the Photo Effects category. I'm going to enlarge that, and I'm picking the second item down called Sky Replacement. When you click on that, you're going to see that you have a default category with 12 different skies. All you need to do is click on the image and it will attempt to replace the sky. Now it does it with some imperfections. We'll show you how to get around those in a moment. So I can pick any kind of sky, but you notice each one I pick changes the mood and the feel of the photograph in some rather dramatic ways. When we look at the 11th and 12th options in the default category, we see we have a cloud on each of them. Let's click on that and see what happens. You notice these are actually GIFs. They're moving uh, and repeating images. So we get to use these as well if we want. Now we can export the result either as a GIF file, WMV or MP4, or we can export it as a still image. If you do that, it will use the first frame of the motion file if you chose that. So you have all these in default. Now there's other kinds of images you have as well. If you're a 365 subscriber and you have sky packs, you see I've downloaded five already. If I want another one, I click on store and it will give me a list of the ones I've downloaded, the ones I have not. If I want to download, I click on the blue and white button. It will take me to my Cyberlink application manager, then to the web, and it will download any packages I don't have that I would like to use. We'll go back to the My Templates. An example of what you see in the Sky Pack, this one's lots of pastels and rainbows, and many of these are animated as well because they have the cloud on them, and some are not. So you have all kinds of nice additional packs available to you in Cyberlink that you can use for your skies. You have a third option, and the third option in the templates, when I go to the top, is imported. I can click on this, and now I can import any sky, or rather any visual image I like, to be the sky that would be my replacement. So any third-party image I can use and add, all I need to do is click on the icon here, and I can import any photo and it will manage it just like it does the native ones or the ones that are part of the packs. So it's nice to have that additional source for your sky images. Let's go back to the default and click the simple one here. It looks like it's done a decent job, but there are some issues we need to deal with. And that's why I like the tools below. Let's look at all the settings we have. When you import a sky image, you can feather it. And feather basically softens the edges all around it. So it softens it by dragging left to right. The horizon basically feathers on the bottom. If I drag to the right, if you look between the water and the sky, you're going to see a difference. I have more of the original image now as I drag that to the right. Land ambient option, that's an interesting one. If I move it to the left, watch what happens especially to the canopies. They're more intense. The colors more brighter of the people in the sand. If I move it to the right, more affected by the blue in the image that I chose. So that's what the land ambient does. Then we have this enable sky replace, a resize and movement. When I click on that, I see that my sky is actually a big image defined by this white area. So I can use the hand and drag and move to take a different part of the image to be my sky. Or I can actually zoom in tighter or zoom out, the tighter I make the image, the, s the smaller the, the clouds get in this particular case. So that gives me a way to modify the image. I can make them look more far away. I can expand it to a level and make everything in the image look bigger, blow it up. And so I can get exactly what I want, where I want to some degree, and that will change it. When I'm done, I click on Enable Sky Resize, and that will give me the result on the screen. We also have an option here called Advanced Sky Settings. This is where you can add a glow by using the slider. In this case, it will darken it. You can add an edge. It will make the clouds more sharp, more gritty. 
You can change the temperature, which changes a lot in this particular kind of image. I don't see myself using temperature change a lot, but you can also change exposure, lighter or darker, basically. You can also fade. Now watch what happens when I fade. If you look above the lady uh, in the black and I fade, I get back toward the original image. Notice what I have here. I have a sailboat. And when I, when I take it back, the sailboat disappears. We're going to talk about that in a minute and how to change all that. Then we have a defocus, which is basically a blur. I don't know why they just don't call it blur. And we can also flip the sky horizontally. And now I use this when I have a moon or a, a sun in the sky and I have it on the right side. I want it on the left side. I click this button and it'll flip from one to the other. Let's look a little bit at the, the issue of the missing sailboat and other things. That's why I think the brush tools are something we always have to use before we're done with the sky replacement. If I click my fade and move it back up so I see the sailboat, I need to paint the sailboat back in. And basically we're using masking. So I'm going to zoom in and here's my sailboat and the clouds are obscuring it. So I'm going to click on my minus brush and we're going to paint it back in. Now it starts out with a feather. I tend to want to have no feather. I would tend to want to make it solid. And here I'm going way over. Now I can actually go on her head because I never want that to be part of the sky. And I can see I have some of the water too that's blended with the sky. If you want that, it's fine. If you don't, well, I'm just going to go over with my brush and make sure I don't have any of that happening here. So I have a sharper image. It also is on the umbrella. So again, I will always use this kind of a tool to make sure that the result I have is as precise as possible. And I can hold the minus now to go from plus to minus and make my sail look a little bit different here. We're just doing this in a very rough shape for the sake of the tutorial. That clears it up. And then when I go back to my full view, I go to fit. I'm going to apply it. And I click my fade, go back. Now the sailboat is in the water. It's not obscured by my fake sky. There's another issue here we have. If I zoom in on this part, I see that I have some sky below the canopy and some sky not. So in this case, again, I'd use the same brush and I would want to draw in more sky below the canopy, less sky on the guy's hat. And I'm just doing this roughly here. So when we back up again and we click apply, now I have sky under the canopy. I don't have sky in front of the boat. Let me show you a third thing you can do that's kind of interesting. Let's suppose you have a, an ugly tree or a flagpole or, or something like that that's getting in the way. And you'd rather just have sky there. Well, you can actually replace anything in your image with sky by using the brush tool again. Let's assume this part of the canopy I don't want. So I'm just going to take my brush and we'll draw it out very quickly. Make it go away like it never existed. And I'm going to click Apply. And now it's gone. Now you see a little bit of an element here. That's because my fade isn't set back all the way to zero. If you edit where the sky meets anything in your photograph to really tweak it great, you can have pretty impressive looking results using the sky replacement tool in PhotoDirector 365.